Hello and welcome to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hoof to heart. I don't know if I care. Hmm. I haven't heard that phrase before. I wonder what it is. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. And oh boy. It's finally time, ladies and gentlemen. We've come to the, well, I don't want to use the word dreaded, but uh, let's just say we've gone, came to the main series of the Generation 5 of uh, My Little Pony. The Make Your Mark series. <laughs> and just to clarify things at home with the audience and also myself, Make Your Mark is considered to be one of the mainstays? Like, is, is the... Is the thing that people are wanting to watch, right? It was considered the main series. Even though it's uh, a 40 or an about an hour episode kind of thing? Well, yeah, it was It was where we expected the, the plot to advance. Or so we with tell your tale With Tell Your Tale mm, filling in the gaps, so to speak. Mm, all right, so... The, the idea is uh, Tell Your Tale is to fill in the gaps or just to get people up to speed while Make Your Mark is the one that kind of caps uh, uh, bookend and uh, what's, the, what's the phrase silver? Book start, book end? Uh, how, how do you put it? Well I would say it fleshes out the side aspects and then maybe bookends the story and then start a new one with whatever season or whatever episode so and so is going to start with Tell Your Tale something like that right? maybe alright 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 all right. so <clears throat> first impressions are in order uh, Silver what do you think man? well I remember watching this uh, when it first came out and just appreciating that the studio, this was a different studio than what made the movie. This was them, their first outing. And first outings are always, a, can be rough. You have to, uh, you need time to get more in the swing. So this was a different start. On its own, it would have been fine. But as a follow-up to the movie, unfortunately, it, could, it couldn't compare. And it was, it was more, okay, let's see where we go from here. Jacob, what about you? Uh, well, um, I don't know what is, there is to say. <sighs> Not particularly a good start for the series, to be honest. Oh man, really? No. Yeah, I, right. there, there's probably plenty of problems that I'm gonna question when we get through this, but well, for now it's. Uh, not a, not particularly a good start to what it is for the what what's considered the main series. Ah, oh, all right, all right, all right, understandable. Um, as for me, um, well, how, how would I put this? The the thing that caught me or just that I noticed is that the animation style. Um, right out of the gate, we are seeing three D now. And this is not movie quality 3D. This is a lower budget 3D. And you, like when it's like Silver mentioned that there is that gap of quality. But in my mind, I already kind of expected it to be well. It's straight to Netflix, so the quality is just going to be okay. It's not the best, but they're working with what they have and if I'm not mistaken the voice actor are from Tell Your Tale right? yeah it's the same both ways ah alright but I did notice that they had a different cadence uh, what I'm trying to say is that their the way that they present their character seems a bit different uh, how, how uh, sorry a good example is how you would see a line done in the comic versus how a character would say it in the show. You get what I mean? I think so. 
It feel it feels uh, to me it feels that maybe way. maybe a different uh, voice director. Probably could be because uh, the starting line when uh, Zip says something, it feels like this is Zip's voice, but her cadence is a bit different. Her tone is a bit different. Probably uh, one of the other few things is her characteristics that I feel like is a bit different. Uh, she's the more probably in this episode or in this special, she's more um, guarded, more kind of what's the word looking for? Um, more lack of confidence. Hmm. It, it just feels more like, e more eager to grow. Probably. I don't know. We will get into it when we get into it. But those are my first impressions in terms of the whole uh, quality. Uh, me saying Zip's voice thing was kind of the first thing I saw and one of the first things that popped into my mind. But still, um, those were examples. But anywho, um, those were the uh, initial thoughts. So if you guys have not watched this episode yet, it's been a while since it's out, so I hope you do. Uh, go watch it here now. Welcome back. So, um, instead of going to scene, to, uh, scene by scenes, I feel like we should go to themes. And starting out, we, we see that Zip is going back to Zephyr Heights. And the reason why she's going back to Zephyr Heights is to get the um, Pip's lucky microphone from uh, her castle and whatnot and the way that she's doing it is sneaking into the castle via the windows and whatnot and she's doing it like a thief and Pip just says you could have done it you, you could have walked through the front door and grab it like you you own the place kind of thing and over here we see that Zip here has some kind of <laughs> I, I, I won't say allergy, but she she had she's really adamant and not going home and talking to her mom about her responsibility of being the next ruler for Zephyr Heights. Silver? Well, yeah, she, she doesn't want a princess lesson, mm. which is kind of funny, as that was what we were waiting for Twilight to have back in the day. <laughs> or at least I was. She well, did she, got her lessons, right? Well, she had to figure the things on her own. Uh, the school hard knocks. <laughs> All right. I mean, the, the funny thing is this ep for this special, and indeed for a good chunk of the series, I would argue, Pip is the one who basically takes over as main character. She is the most driven, the most uh, curious, the one trying her hardest to discover the hidden meanings behind the world. Now, as a character, it makes sense. She took part in the big lie for so long, you know, the divine right of wings, mm -hmm. that now she's looking for truth wherever she can find it. But unfortunately, that also means she usurps Sunny as the main character. That, that is all true. That, that is true. And um, I could have a bias on this one, but I do enjoy the role that Sunny plays here, uh, becoming quote-unquote the lead. Uh, if, I, if I were to say that probably Zip here is my favorite pony for G5. Um, high chance, yes. But I do get what you mean, Silver, because usually the show revolves around the main character and the main character for G5 is supposed to be Sunny but you do you guys notice that there's no quote unquote main character at all well I mean uh, Misty hasn't shown up yet <laughs> that is also true no, but, but, what, but what I mean is that the the show, the way that the show is presented is that they don't have a central character. 
like in for example the G4 movie um the one where um Sia the pony with the white and black hair or mane was uh, that that version the, the movie Songbird thing. Serenade yeah Songbird Serenade yeah uh, that that movie was revolving around Twilight and how Twilight was trying to do everything she could to uh, get Equestria back into what you call this uh, to free her to free uh, her uh, to free Equestria from the Storm King and so on. We we see that and her trials and tribulation. Uh, her friends were there to support her and to scold her when she did something bad and so on. So we do see that with that dynamic over there. Even with uh, Equestria girls, um, not including um, Twy from uh, Equestria, but we, we focus on Sunset. So it's really surprising for this one where we didn't really get a... I won't say central? We, we kind of got that with Zip, but it feels like they're ping-ponging all over the place. Well, I mean, she does seem to be the main char- the main uh, center point of this series. I mean, just look at the Netflix series uh, poster. But you could also <laughs> say that with Rainbow Dash in terms of market marketability. But uh, yeah, I do see your point. Like she she is in front of the uh, poster and whatnot, so she's up at front and center. Silver, what, what, what's your opinion on this? Sorry? But yeah, kind of odd considering that, well, even even in the movie, Sunny was basically at the center point and, well, just in working here. <laughs> mm, all right. Silver? Well, how to put it? After, the hard thing about the movie is that they, Sunny had a very particular goal. She wanted to restore the relations between the three tribes and see about reclaiming magic in Equestria. And she succeeded. I mean, it's still a little rough around the edges, but she's figuring it out. But then the problem comes, where does she go from here? Exactly. The question is, what now? Where's the character, and really, where's the character arc? I feel like the goal afterwards should be like, okay... We now that we've reconnected on these three cities, what about the rest of Equestria? Can we go out and connect with more of them? But instead, they seem to double down on just staying in Maritime Bay, maybe for budgetary reasons, maybe for copyright story. Re- Sorry, either which way, but but uh, unfortunately, they we didn't really get the what now. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, right, the, the follow-up for Sunny's question is after uniting all the ponies and whatnot and discovering or, or getting back magic is that, yeah, um, next up is understanding um, the magic, understanding the... Uh, understanding uni- uh, Equestria, what happened and whatnot. But, yeah, th- this is a good, uh, what you call this, question to ask. But I feel like the pony that's asking the question is Zip instead of Sunny. And I'm not saying that Sunny is bad, but it feels like Sunny is focused on trying to um, harmonize whatever she has here, which is not bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, work on what you have first before expanding. Well, this, <clears throat> this may be a flaw from, carried over from the movie because Sunny never went out into the greater world despite her name being Star Scout That's- she the outside world had to come to her in the form of Izzy hi new friend <laughs> yep I do remember that yep yep but let, let's carry on because we, we, we can't have a field day with this one but uh, let's try and speed things up. So, during Izzy's flight back home, she saw two ponies kind of uh, crashing into each other and falling down. Izzy, sorry, Zip, 
uh, saves the day and the two ponies says we got no idea what happened like suddenly we were flying and we lost control and we bump into each other and he's, uh, Zips here just says it's, it's all good um, we just discovered our powers and flying and whatnot. so uh, it's going to take a while it's going to take a while so yeah um, practice and have fun and Although you struck royalty, therefore you are executed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, um, following after that, we, we do see the subplot where the other ponies are trying to get hype for the uh, Maritime Bay. What was it called again? The, the Maritime, Maritime Bay. Day. Bay. Was it? Maritime Bay Day. Yeah, Maritime Bay Day. So. They're they're having uh, Sunny introduce what's going on and whatnot. And it makes sense, yeah. So that's been the what you call this um, subplot where we we get to see them promoting it and kind of hijacking broadcast on to Bridalwood, onto uh, Zephyr Heights, and also Maritime Bay, and showing how awesome is. Uh, the powers of the flight and the powers of the magics and so on and yeah th that's what they've been trying to do promote and so on so uh, while promoting uh, we, we see a seagull steals the phone from out of Pip's uh, hooves and do they have this chase scene where oh no we, we're going all over the place and we see the ponies chase after them and uh, the seagull kind of dumps the phone and Izzy saves the phone with her magic but at the same time too she's, she doesn't have full control of her magic because it keeps uh, turning on and off well, you would wonder why probably she, has, she doesn't have practice or so we think and she crashes into a flower bed and here is where we are introduced to um posy not flood not fluttershy not fluttershy sorry uh oh posy, oh she's got the yellow she's got the pink i think even her eye color is pretty similar but she's not fluttershy oh yeah oh yeah actually i should mention I should mention her design. The yellow is a bit more acidic in uh, in Make Your Mark. Mm, that, that is true. Um, when, when I saw her in Tell Your Tales, I didn't really um, see her as Fluttershy. But over here in Make Your Mark, I automatically click, hey, is that Fluttershy? Uh, but is this a reference to the G1 pony? Pretty much. But yeah, this is basically where the plot technically starts because the first minutes of this uh, episode is basically just a recap of the movie, including the characters spelling out their friends' personalities. Yeah, uh, and and we we do see the drama here where po Posey here is just saying that um, uh, a unicorn almost smugly hit me with their levitating box or. Um, the Pegasi blocked my son when I was trying to uh, have a sun tan or something like that. And um, she's reporting or she's complaining to um, Officer Schiff. What was his name again? Uh, Hitch? Hitch, yes. Officer Hitch. And Hitch is just like, oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I got a job to do. Bye. So we, we do see that uh, Posey here makes some good points but at the same time too she's a bit of a Karen a bit you say mm. only a bit I think <laughs> she's just jealous because she's not special like everybody else I mean that's true but so Silver, um, to up 
we were talking now with the what you call this uh, subplot with Maritime Bay Day, Day and Posey here what do you think what do you think of Posey well she's meant to represent the anger of earth ponies in general especially the theory that they uh, that they don't have the same magical expression as unicorns and pegasi so but she's so petulant and as you say Kearney it's really more oh I don't like her and unfortunately it's all one sided like she her attitude is so negative and that's the defining trait there's no ponies saying you know oh it's too bad you earth ponies don't have any magic or don't worry i know it's not your fault i know you don't have any magic you know we need to see some treatment or condescension from the other tribes to show that this is still a problem of all three we've gone from a mutual uh exclusion to just earth ponies that's true that's true and also at the same time too i'm trying to remember g4 because my frame of reference when it comes to ponies is g4 and in g4 from what i remember from lauren she mentioned that even though earth ponies don't have an overt overt magic like how pegasi or even unicorns have their, their magic is usually uh, nature based uh, in, in the form of animals I'm oh, sorry uh, in the form of animal handling or in the form of um, uh, farming and so on so that's or, or basically good with, good with their hooves so that's always been their trajectory or their uh, quote unquote uh, specialty but in this one we, we in the first movie we, we see that even though they don't have the technological power for levitation or even flight they they took whatever they had and innovate themselves with tech that there is already something to be amazed but we don't see that here anymore well, that's probably because, uh, well, the <coughs> makers of the movie are not the same people as the ones who made this series. And the people who made this series probably don't give two, th- two tosses about uh, lore continuity of G4. I mean, well, and, 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 it's this, not... and this is basically, this part basically frustrates me because it's an outright that third parties didn't have any magic at all. It, it They had it, it was just subtle. It was not in your face like what the Pegasi and the Unicorns can do. Silver, you were saying Well, also, we, we should also remember that the staff for Make Your Mark had to start production before the, te- before the new generation movie was even finished. They've been flying blind. Yeah, we've been talking about uh, this. Back, back uh, I don't know what video it was. I forgot what it was. Maybe we can... Well, it bears repeating. Mm. Yeah. Basically, we said yeah. they should have communicated with one another if this was supposed to be, well, uh, a cooperation project or what, whatever. Well, probably. But at the same time, too, f- with that knowledge there, they, well, for what we got, it was pretty okay. And the, the fact of the matter is that the quote unquote uh what you would call this what what was the word I'm looking for? Uh plot hole is just that yeah, um tech should be one of the Earth Pony strong point in this series. And the point of jealousy or point of contention here is just that po- uh, Earth ponies want to have what the Pegasi and Unicorns have without using and ba- so basically on. they want to be special I I won't say special they, they want to do what the other ponies can but they don't have anything that makes them unique 
but eh, okay, okay. <laughs> the, we we can't go into that even more later on. So anyway, um, the five of them go back home to the lighthouse, and we see that Zip here is having trouble with finding herself. And this part here is fascinating because she's she's trying to discover herself, but it feels like okay, does it feel like this is a oh man this is another part where oh because they didn't know where the direction is going to be so that's why it starts this way it's really wishy-washy but um, just j- just to uh, get to the point or just to complete the sentence Zipier is feeling like she's lost she doesn't know which direction she wants to go she doesn't want to go back home and she doesn't know what to do here. That it affects her thought where, okay, um, do you want to help with this? Do you want to help with that? Um, pizza, this. Do you want to do this? Or do you want to do that? And they, and she's paralyzed. Um, choice paralysis. Yeah, or, yeah she, she, she's just stunned for choices. And another subplot where Zip asks Sunny, um, you know, what happened to your Alicorn power thingy? Do you know what's going on with that? And long story short, um, Sunny here doesn't know what's going on or how. Like, she's in the dark like the rest of them. It happens randomly. And when she activated her um, Alicorn power at her workplace. Um, <laughs> the the customer pony with the bonnet kind of smiled and was like at a maze. I, I do like that because it's not every day you get to see a princess serve you um, a smoothie. You've been hit by Tanta. You've been struck by Tanta. A smooth princess server. <laughs> nice. Or a so, smoothie. Um, yeah. yeah, a smoothie criminal. Yeah. There. You go. So, so, long story short, um, Zip wants to understand the magics, but the rest of the ponies here are preoccupied with their daily lives and whatnot. And like I mentioned before, this comes to the fact that Easy is paralyzed by choice, so she decides to investigate the crystal uh, the gems right those are called gems well I think it's crystal unity. oh oh the unity yeah, yeah. Gem, the unity crystals oh unity crystal so she decides to investigate the unity crystal on her own without getting any results a uh, subplot on a subplot on a subplot easy here uh, is, sorry zip here uh, doesn't want to talk to her mom because uh, mom wants her to become a princess. She doesn't. And yeah, that, that that whole thing goes on for a while now. So, we move forward a bit where Sunny comes up and just uh, tries to cheer her up. And it feels like Sunny's dismissing Zip's concern for the power of the gems and like it's kind of glitching out but yeah she she oh no that doesn't happen yet but still um, she, she dismisses her for now and it is just very strange like how this is all happening so is there anything you, got, uh, you guys want to cover because if not I am going to speed up forward a bit well, let's see. We we haven't really talked about Hitch and his shift from a very, mm, I would say, reliable sheriff to someone who's a bit who's more emotional and wishy washy. Yeah, we've talked about this for a while now, in, in, including the what uh, uh, in previous episodes, like the previous um, Hitch was full of confidence and want to do his job 
like kind of the foil kind of thing but in this one he, he he's adamantly trying to avoid his work <laughs> especially the part when it comes to the beach and yeah I don't know man and this is the part where Zip investigates or notice stuff and tries to jot it down and yeah keep track of everything so uh, at this point um, there's a report saying that hey uh, there's a disturbance on the beach uh, let's check it out and whatnot. and Zip sorry uh, Hitch here discovers an egg well not solving the problem with the ponies because uh, one pony says here that uh, she's uh, purposely destroyed the sand castle while she says it was not my fault my magic kind of uh, was on the fritz and Hitcher just runs away not doing his job like yeah. you, you could tell that there's a difference in personality and I don't know how to feel on this one like did we did, did we come to an understanding of why Silver not that I'm aware no yeah, no, I, 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 I think personally, Hitch is an authority figure, and it seems like they're trying to increase the comedy by showing him being more hysterical. Again, comedy being for a forging of a link between lack and excess. The problem is that rather than being funny, which you know it could be a little bit funny if he in just the right if you present that in just the right way but as it is i feel like it's more just undermining his credibility rather than giving him a proper shall we say uh a th role within the show and by the end it's going to be come down to him essentially just being a dragon dad who happens to be a sheriff yeah and also at the same time too when it comes to his job uh like between friend and the job he's picking the friends because he doesn't want to get pressured because i think what posey here was trying to make a report she went to the station and yeah and th this is this feels like this is a byproduct of them not sharing information with new generation well does it help that his suggestion box is a shredder yeah <laughs> that's also true yeah Ooh, although now i want a ninja turtle crossover well you got transformers crossover already that is true i want more <laughs> I'm, yeah i'm getting my disney princess on i want more <laughs> uh, boy. yep but I'm sure, but yeah, I'm I mean, sure. uh, why, why would they, and why would be a point of making huge the butt of the jokes when you already have easy to do that? Yeah, pretty much. Yep, yep. So anyway, I'm gonna fast forward a bit, and we we see that. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Wait, I I don't know how to even fast forward this. Uh, they were so the show's so long but nothing really much happened so to slow down the tempo Pip calls for an emergency and said emergency is that everybody is stressing out so let's have a uh, makeover at my place and they're they're just hanging out I, I, I don't see I don't see much. I, I think this is just a setup for uh, the chaos that's happening outside where a bunch of Pegasi just accidentally fell on some ponies. And I think that's a setup because, oh no, uh, what happened? Because we flew and we fell, I'm sorry. And Posey here is saying that we don't want you non-Earth ponies here. We need to make the wall. We need to make... Maritime Bay great again. <laughs> we don't take kindly to you non-Earth ponies around, yeah? <laughs> but yeah, of course, you don't see anything happening here because the main melody looks so dark and claustrophobic compared to the 
tell your tale version, which looks so bright and open. Yeah, and and and, and because of that chaos, um, one one of the few things that I mentioned before with uh, how Pip here doesn't really stand his ground as a sheriff is that when Ozzy here asks, "Oh, are you siding with them?" and or instead of doing a job he just frees up and can't say much like oh no I, I don't want to offend my friends but I don't want to oh no uh, I'm paralyzed uh, what to do Ooh. and I feel like previous the movie Hitch won't be won't do that no he wouldn't <laughs> And so okay. we're having to deal with a new dynamic here. Yeah. But could you you just imagine you just remember the scene where Hitch here just says or, or just put uh his deputy in charge and he chases down Sunny uh and Easy all throughout Equestria and even snuck into the castle of the Pegasi, which is quote unquote his enemy or uh, yeah they're, they're his enemy and whatnot like could, that is that is just insane for his character and now we see this passive pony being afraid of being questioned about his choices as a sheriff that's just oh my god no I honestly don't see what what was the point of emasculating him to be honest yeah I understand that so um, we, uh, mm. when when they when those ponies were fighting, we see that there's a dark and stormy cloud, and Zip here is saying that there's something to do, the, the magic something to do with the gem or the crystal, and to prove a theory, she created discourse within the group and made everyone angry, made everyone uh, get mad at each other uh, basically just get them fighting and proves to them that uh, the crystal is affected by our emotions the more we fight the more unstable uh, the crystals are going to be and might break and there's no way to fix them anymore so with us being harmonizing or with us being uh, together being a party, being a group, being uh, harmonizing with each other, uh, we're creating magic for the crystal to be stable, and I kind of like that because she's the one that's doing all the hard work because she's been pursuing this from the very beginning. Um, Jacob, what do you think? Well. Uh... There's this major problem that comes with Unique Crystal, but honestly, I'm gonna say it for when we get to the comments because that problem becomes extremely not noticeable there. All right, uh, Silver, what about you? Well, <clears throat> funny enough, there is there was a study done about uh, trust in governments, and I know that seems unrelated, but hang with me here. Uh, what basically I found Twilight with these crystals created a system that covers both bases. In one instance, if there's high trust in the government, you look for rewards, discounts, uh, tax credits, uh, incentives to praise members of the community, essentially. If there's low trust in the government, you want them to punish wrongdoers. The paradox being that because the government is low trustworthy, i.e. full of corruption and easily bought off, they won't, uh, they won't punish anybody. They'll just accept a bribe. <laughs> All right. So here's Twilight setting up this crystal system that does a little bit of both. It Pun if you are misbehaving, you are punished by having magic removed. If you're getting along, having fun, the crystals actually reward you with greater magic. 
Stronger Magic. And so I found that a fascinating duality. But well, when we get later where the negativity is so strong, it literally opens a portal to hell, no. maybe? It's the federal Empty realm. It's, the, it's where you get banished when you lose the duel. Now, you'd think that Wind Close would turn up at, the po at that point where uh, ponies are arguing and, well, would finally have some G4 continuity lore here, but nope. Instead, reality begins, fun becomes falling apart and the void begins to devour everything. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just is! As far as I know, it's never really explained why this happens. So, Silver, uh, why, God? Why? Silver, back to your point when you were talking about how Twilight developed those crystals. Uh, is that something for future episodes? Unfortunately, no. They they don't. They ended uh, make your mark before it could reward her with any other uh, magic, and unfortunately. Uh, we, we didn't get to explore this idea further. It's a fun idea, but unfortunately, we just didn't get... Uh, we didn't get the chance to explore it. Oh, okay, because you, you, you're talking about those crystals that were made by Twilight, and even if she made it, like, what was the, what was the reasoning? What, 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 why? The reason always changes. There's one reason in this episode, and there's another reason in the comics, and then in the fin final season, it's something else entirely. Really, no. As far oh, as I've man. seen. But also, yeah. to the point of uh, what you were saying about uh, the, well, government's trust, obviously, or what about when... Uh, hold on. Um... Let's just say that uh, to be begin to argue and instead you punish both of them until they kiss and make up, but the, pro the root of the problem never really disappears. What then? Aren't you then basically just uh, forcing peace, but underneath the problem still exists, it just never comes up and it just continues to uh, faster. Well, how does the problem just go, the root of the problem just go away? It doesn't. But you said they're two arguing and then the cause just up and disappears? Well, I said that uh, it's expected to, uh, to just go, uh, to just kiss and make up and things are gonna go away. But it's never that easy. Well, tell tell your tale. Invoke this a few times. It was more a signal of, "Hey, you guys, you're you're going about this all wrong." And then they had to puzzle out how to do this better. So, mm, I will not say it's the per it's a perfect solution, but it is an interesting idea. Hmm. Yeah, but in this case, we got a problem that uh, one. Um, sorry. Uh. One species of points is telling telling that it's not fair that the others are that others are special compared to them. So how do you fix that problem? Well, they're supposed to figure it out themselves, and honestly, it's a hard, it's a trial and error, and error, and error, and error. It's always error, and then. Uh, Magic Mr. Kilda Govan happens. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. So, uh, Norman, continue. All right. Uh, but in all honesty, like, I, I do see what uh, Silver's point is. Because the, the rule of the game right now is that uh, for them, for the ponies, if you stop fighting and you harmonize, you will be rewarded with unlimited power. But if you fight, and cause this distrust and disharmony, you lose all that power. So, with them not knowing that, they keep doing their shenanigans, and this is what happens to them. But now that they know the rules, they're they're going to play nice. 
which is kind of an evil plan. It's only Discord. Uh, this, this sounds like a plan that Discord came up for Twy, and Twy somehow said yes to it. I don't know. I, I view it more as a parental plan. I mean, okay. Okay, I I have a brother, Norman. I believe you have some uh, brothers and sisters. I have a sister, yeah. A sister, Jakob. I have a sister. So, at any time in a disagreement, did your parents just step in and say, you know, make up or or stop fighting? Sometimes I... yes, sometimes no. So okay, so sometimes yes, sometimes no. Up to the parents' prerogative, I guess. Yeah, so, similar, similar. So I think the how how to best put it, I think this is an extension of that. Imperfect, but it's more to try and get everyone to harmonize in the hopes that then it becomes a natural default. And I understand that. And this is one of those things where you need to hammer in that lesson, saying that don't fight. You fight and you lose something. In this case, you lose magic, so don't fight. Now, the real question is, how did those three gems got separated in the first place? <laughs> well, I would also well, question at what point is such a system tyrannical? It's... Because you're forcing people to get along and, well... <sighs> Jake, I understand your point, but at the same time, too, you, 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 can't, you can't go overthink on this one because... This is a show about magical ponies. In reality, if this is something that's developed uh, in real life, like say that, okay, if you fight, we'll take away your privileges. Yeah, the person this... could just say, screw this, I'm going somewhere else. But in this pony universe? Eh. Yeah. Yeah, but also the problem is that in the, in uh, this case it's not uh, an individual punishment; it's more like uh, collective punishment. If one person gets out of line, everybody else gets punished uh, in turn. So yeah, I don't, I, I don't see any problem if there. Anything, if anything, it's in the end comes down to basically peer pressure. If anything, <laughs> to be honest, right? This comes back to the fact where if one person does something wrong, everybody gets punished. If one person does something right, everybody gets rewarded. Mm, honestly, I see it more that one character is meant to represent the larger attitude. Yeah. And so sorry? it's not just one person does this and everybody else suffers. Mm. I mean, feels, the sorry? Well, nothing, nothing. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know, it, it just seems that this problem didn't start until Posey started complaining and then, well, in one case, uh, well, what was it, the beach that start, and started the whole thing. I mean, yeah, but small because... things, but it was, it was really small things that really didn't uh, matter that much. Yeah, but those are the problems that snowball in because... Posey felt jealous because she wasn't really honest with her feelings or with her thoughts and shared her concerns with, let's just say, Sunny because she's an alicorn, quote-unquote. So her negative emotions fester her up to become this, tyrann not really tyrannical, but to this, this, this pony that kind of doesn't uh, if jealous and feels like she, she has the bad end of the stick or has the bad end of the luck pull or whatever it is and a lot of other ponies feel the same way and kind of ganged up on the others to kind of express their feelings because oh it's not fair that we earth ponies don't have your powers we don't have any powers at all we're, we're we, we, we can't do your magic of light or levitation. That is so unfair. Gar, gar, gar. And you're back to the lower part where all of this is a load of hooey. 
to be honest, I I can see the D five floor uh, going where it's gone because there's that gap of a hundred plus years, and with them kind of advancing so far that they kind of forgot their traditions. Well, I wouldn't say so much because, well, actually, you know what? We'll continue, and we're gonna get to that point. All right, then. So, uh, moving forward a bit, we go to the part where the ponies have a good rest, wake up for the maritime bay day day, and they head out to kind of get ready. Uh, Izzy stops Sunny and gives her a surprise, and Sunny says, uh, usually we don't um, give give for maritime bay day but um, thanks and she opens it up and sees that hey uh, is this my what you call this lantern oh wow you fixed it for me that's awesome and amazing wow I, I'm speechless and yeah there, there's a bit of inconsistency with the uh, what you call this uh, lantern but still it looks good well, this is, this is the a part that I mentioned uh, in the Tell or Tell last time. Because, well, uh, you didn't mention it uh, before, but at the start of the ep- of this episode, basically it shows that uh, Izzy was still not finished with the lamp. It was still a broken down wreck when she showed it to Pip. And now, the, ne- the next day, it's, uh, it's fixed. <laughs> I guess in between is when she did her tyrannical or uh, ter- terrorizing ring hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere there. Oh boy! So uh, we we see the ponies at the party trying to have a good time, and we see some discourse with ponies not enjoying stuff like uh, the reef. Uh, some of the reefs are made with uh, silver spoons or teaspoons some are rocks and some are whatever and Posey Posey here again says oh I don't like this this is untraditional let's make uh, Maritime Bay great again and we we see the sandcastle project is the winner it's a really good sandcastle by the way uh, it's won by a pegasi she won but some of the other contestants are Posey again god damn it Posey why are you you know it is kind of funny that uh, for someone who doesn't seem to enjoy being in the public spotlight she sure does get involved in a lot of events I know oh boy but yeah um, she's not happy with the results because oh she it's unfair because she can fly to do all the oh god damn silver tell me if I'm Hi. tell me if I'm right but if if I remember right earth ponies have this ability to work with the ground right with the soil to make it to, to make farming easier right Theoretically, yes. And but remember, could... but remember, Norman. According to G five, Earth Ponies never had magic before. Uh, but, but you could, you you still could say that that innate feeling of creation with your hoof is still there, right? Oh man, I I uh... well, it's a, I guess it depends. I mean, when someone is this actually, I think goes back to that uh, Iron Pony show off between Applejack and uh, Rainbow Dash. Mm-hmm. How much of it is natural ability versus uh, you enjoy an, a, an unfair advantage? You can build a three-tier sandcastle because you can fly. Well, the other your opponent can't fly. Is that fair? No, but at the same time, too, to be honest, you work with your limitations, and 
like I mentioned before, for an Earth Pony, you could make everything more detailed. And well, that would be something. But either way, Posey doesn't like losing. Oh yeah, that's true. And then again, I've never met anyone who enjoys losing. There's a special type of player who plays for fun and just enjoys the game. Ah, but that's not enjoying losing. It's not caring. Yeah, true. But to be honest, right? I, I'll be honest. When I play a game of Magic the Gathering, the Commander format, if I lose, I, and the way I lost was kind of cool and awesome, I'll just say, okay, that was cool. That was awesome. Oh man, I did not see that coming. And I, I enjoyed that loss because <laughs> the person outsmarted me. And by the way, this is a four player game. So that person who won had to think, uh, have to think about the other three opponents to win. So to me, that, that is just awesome in, on its own. And for me, if the loss was, sorry, if the win that the opponent had was well fought, I could appreciate the loss. Well, good on you, Norman. I uh, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! And... Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where if you don't have your first turn win, you lose. In the current format. <laughs> but even then, the fails of cards have been created to combat that. And there's cards that have ah. combat that too. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, Lorcana well, or something. <laughs> that's why it, I, honestly, that's why I almost <laughs> only played the gold format recently. Mm. Yeah, still the, the gold, gold, the gold format, gold, gold format, time. as in scapegoats. Huh. Ah ah, bah. <laughs> but still, what you were saying? Just that well, Yu-Gi-Oh victories are not so much clever as the cards just sort of do it for you. That's also true. That's also true. But uh, it depends on the game. It, it always depends on the game. Like well, now I'm just now I'm just being sour. <laughs> uh, talking about sour, uh, one of the, 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 the them ponies don't like the, that green ice cream. They say it's disgusting. Yeah. Why? It's way they out of greenery. Their horses, they eat it. <laughs> yeah, but no, they they, they dump it. And the unicorn just dumpster dives. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. see, it, it it goes, it all goes back to the dumpster dive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, two ponies see in disgust, and somehow a typhoon happens. And because of all the negative emotions, the Mar- maritime bay is going to be destroyed by bad juju's. And this is where I'm kind of like, uh, did Twilight intend this? Because the opening a portal to swallow everything up doesn't seem like her MO. Maybe she got a bit pissed off when she got older. So this is it, her uh, tyrannical phase. It's not, it's not so much a portal, it's more like an ever-expanding void. Yeah, get rid I'm of just think- oh, I'm just thinking of that uh, movie. This is the end. You're already in the hole. I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we, we see that the Pegasi lost their ability to fly. Some of them, uh, the Earth ponies are bounded to the ground, and the unicorns lost their uh, magic to levitate stuff, and. Uh, they, they, they managed to get out of it but still because of their discourse and whatnot, they are losing their powers so now to fix the problem we see that uh, Sunny's plan is to sing the new team song yeah we need to sing the new team song Pip you're a singer go out on stage and sing yeah so she's gonna do that what could go wrong I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you what could go wrong. Posey. And, 
and then funny enough the magic holds all the earth ponies in place and episode ends <laughs> series over yeah but no um you wish uh, uh, the, the crystals well no you got you got your wish <laughs> yeah but um, crystal is almost cracking and it seems that because of their discourse like here's the thing the the main five are trying to harmonize everybody but they're not they're, they're not agreeing to it so to punish them the gods of gods have created a black hole to swallow up all the non-believers they, oh Norman you're not go you're not going all left behind on us are you I hope not but because Zeus doesn't seem so, to agree he threw a bolt of lightning to the ground to create said black hole <laughs> and with that um the ponies well not not D but some of them who couldn't run away in time fell and got lost into the ether um some of the other ponies uh the main five mostly uh tried to help them escape the what you call this holes and uh and yeah they, they, they're working together uh, we see posy and that unique um pegasi uh fall into the hole together at least we do do see the pegasi trying to help her out uh, Posey say come on help me out uh, and Posey say I can't fly that's a problem and they both fell to their doom series over uh, but we also see that to solve that problem we need to sorry Sunny said I need to to, to go Alicorn to go magical powers and this is where Zip says guys help everybody out uh, because by helping you give good feelings and good feelings is what we need right now and with that Sunny manages to get her power and yay anything else you want to add guys yes Izzy Izzy gives her the lantern and says it's dangerous to go alone take this <laughs> yeah oh man it's dark in that hole and somehow, by her sacrificing herself and her holding a lantern, she developed her Alicorn power. Yay! Did we get an explanation of how she developed that? Just that it it comes when she the need is greatest. Really? But she she can't control it. So wait, wait, really? So that, that's the explanation. I, well, I mean, usually she says, oh, my friends need help. My friends need help. Boop, Alicorn. But I guess her friends really needed help with that smoothie truck. I see, Alicorn. All right. <laughs> or maybe the Alicorn magic was like, no, this isn't the prime location. Look over here. Boom. <laughs> now you get more customers. I see. Mm -hmm. So wait, wait, wait. Does, does the Alicorn power help Sunny with her uh, tax returns? depends i feel like the the chief leadership in maritime bay was deposed is anyone paying taxes i don't know man but uh wait. oh my god how's how's hitch making payment is he getting paid i don't know but um but with sunny saving the ponies and saving the whatnot now uh it seems that her power was transferred to, not really transferred, but big big beam of rainbow, uh, went to the lighthouse and stabilized and mend the crack crystal, and because of that, the Earth ponies develop powers. Like Hitch here manages to talk to animals, like a certain Pegasi we knew from back in the day. I'm not bitter. Best pony lost her power. Mm. Anyway, um, mm. sorry. Let us tell us how you really feel. I don't like it. It feels not fair. Best pwn need to be best pwn stats. Anyhow, 
uh, Hitch here understands the ponies and sorry uh, the the creatures and develops the animal uh, talking skill. So that's good. Posey here now develops the power of rose making, flower power. Peace, y'all. So yeah, things seems to be going well, really, really well. That's awesome. Now uh, some of the Earth ponies there too develop the skill to mend trees and grow back leaves. So that's good, right? Well, I think we're we're ignoring the the two portents of doom. Oh, I I I, I don't know what you're talking about because from what I can tell. Um, the ponies are uh, appreciating what they have and um, Pip here invites or asks uh, Posey here to sing the theme song uh, while Sunny and Zip here apologizes sorry um, Sunny apologizes to Zip for dismissing her worries and uh, saying that she's right Queen here says, okay, let's go home. And Pip here, uh, Zip says, nah, I want to stay here and because I want to discover self, I want to go on a journey of self-discovery. Queen says, okay, all is cool for now. And then Egg cracks to discover a dragon. Oh my God. Yep. T tell, tell me there's a, okay. I don't care spoilers or whatnot. Could somebody explain the dragon to me? Oh yeah, well. Spark is born just like that. No need for any intense fire that would stimulate the hatching process. And it's already got wings for some reason, even though it's just a baby. Because when dragons are supposed to get their wings, they first have to go through the mold. Dragon purity, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of silver, you're gonna have to explain that to me about, uh, well... Uh, what, what Pinkie Pie says goodbye. <sighs> ah, yes, I I had a dragon with wings still carrying the funk of puberty smell. <laughs> oh, no. Puberty smell, puberty smell. But, but dragon, baby, how? I, explain, how, why? Well, where the egg came from is never elaborated upon. Did but there is the firm hand of destiny at play. Or in this case, firm hoof. Uh, Spark is the chosen one. Oh, no. Yes, he is. A, he actually is a chosen dragon. Uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, you got no idea how he was there, how he got... No, no, then, right? Well, I mean... He, well, in fact... His, his egg was just lying over there on the beach in the open, and it's not that nobody ever saw it. Did anything. And besides, we never found out how Celestia had an egg in her possession or why it needed Twilight to magically hatch it or so on. Unfortunately, sometimes in fantasy, the answer is just because it seems. I, I guess. Also, there's a lot of fan fictions going on in, in my brain that kind of explains it away. Oh, God. Oh, I, I hate it. Actually, when, well, I'm just thinking the nature of just because it is a powerful force in the world, second only to God. Actually, Why is it second to God? Just because. Actually, I did write fan fiction about how that happened. Oh, <laughs> see, the, the the human mindset wants things to be explained. Uh, I love the human mindset. So, yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I guess there's a foreshadowing that Silver's mentioning here. Like, hmm. You, you mentioned some evildoers, right? Well, mostly I was referring to the impact Sparky will have on this series, which is quite doom, doomable. But yes, we also... Get the the preview of our baddie. I see. Worse villain ever. 
Are you sure, Jacob? Worst villain ever. We 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 had Iron Will. Yeah, but we... he wasn't uh, evil for evil's sake. He was just uh, what was it? An instructor on how to not be a doormat. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe 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 that is a bad example. We we had the bulls from the comics. The cattle wrestlers. Yeah, them. Yeah, but they're <laughs> no. It's a different kind of bad because well, they were evil, but they wanted the property to to own the property. I mean, yeah, it's, they still it... were assholes, but that's that's not the kind of worst villain ever. He was I evil. Know, that's man. if they mean that's kind of worst uh, villain ever, but not by what uh, we're seeing here. Um, I, I I don't know much about her, so I can't tell. Um, okay, never mind. So, anywho, uh, who is this Alicorn? Oh, Alicorn, because uh, she has a horn and we, she doesn't really unfurl her wings. That's a big downside. Like, she should have unfurled her wings for the menacing laugh. Well, she's got an awful complexion to look at, that's for sure. That color is bad. Actually, was that color is bad. But that color was the same shade as the void of the of the pit that opened. I always wondered if there was some connection there. Probably, I don't know. But at the same time, too, right? Uh, the other unicorn, what was it? Misty was the name, was it? Yes. Yep. She's in the background. I, I remember ground. watching. I remember watching this. Uh, what you call this episode the first time, or yeah, watching it for the first time, and I totally miss Misty at the background. Like she is so blended to the background that it's kind of done purposefully because you you want your eyes to be focusing on the villain instead of her at the side. Yeah, but the villain looks like that that you don't want to look at her. <laughs> I don't know, man. That mean is just not great. At all. Ooh, a minion? The main. La Patu! <laughs> oh, man. Ah, Tim the Patu! Hey, buddies! Oh, boys. But, 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 but. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, with, with that, she, she says that. She's going to grab the power and take what back is my take what take back what's mine. Huzzah! Ha 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 ha! And yeah, I, I think that's about it. Um, all the ponies are happy that they're staying together for now, and we do see a lot of cool things that came from Tell Your Tales, like uh, Zips. Uh, goggles um, yeah goggles where she can do a lot of interesting detective work and whatnot. and uh, how Hitch can understand every creature except for this cute little dragon and him not doing his job wow and I well, think that's about do, it well, I mean we do have an explanation where uh, well, Zip got her gear yeah, that, that was in Tell Your Tales, yeah. That was in Tell Your Tales and so on. So that that that's a cool callback. That's a cool callback. Which is not well well this is confusing on all so many levels. Anyway, um that is that's it. That uh, can talk. And that's it. So, um I'm gonna go for you, Jacob. Jacob, what do you think? Uh final thoughts. Well, if there is a question I want to ask, like, what was the lesson of this episode anyway? I mean, what was the lesson I was supposed to teach? Because, uh, I don't know. It just seems like the, the lesson was if you complain enough and more that it's not fair that somebody, that somebody has something you don't, then you'll eventually get it. And this kind of honestly reminds me of that I'm not Starfire story. <laughs> you know what that is? Uh, that's what oh, yeah. Titans? Silver, you sort explain of. it. There is a comic out where 
it's a story about Starfire's daughter, who is suspiciously designed to look like the author. And uh, basically, she is a very angry and petulant young woman who can't really reconcile with her mom until she develops powers similar to Starfire. Okay. So, yeah, honestly, this uh, really wasn't a good start to what was originally considered the main series. Mm, oh, okay. Anything else to add? Um, yeah, honestly, I got nothing else. All right. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Final thoughts. This was a rough start to the series that really highlights the lack of communication between production parties and the need for, I should we say, a, a sort of big picture director working on both the movie and the series. In some ways, it, it reminds me of the Transformers that I, you see this great big movie, this spectacle with really high budget animation, and then you go to season three, and it's, a, it's well, you can't help but call it a downgrade. So, and that is the great struggle that Make Your Mark suffered. It is pres it, it has to carry on from a very high mark with far greater restrictions. And it fall and unfortunately, it, including thanks to corporate meddling, it really fell apart. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I, I totally see that. And as for me, knowing a bit of info now about how this show was made and understand uh, and seeing the result, the end result, yeah, I, I feel like they should have had their own Kevin Feige on this uh, show where they had, they should have had a central visionary or whatever the position is going to be called for them to kind of at least make all the stories, make all the thing or the plot kind of melt together, make sure everything, uh, what you call this, make sure everything uh, blends or make sure everything uh, continues on a coherent storyline. Because tell your tale and make your mark from what we saw to what we got was kind of, hey, that, that's a pretty cool idea, that's a pretty cool concept and they made it work with a few tidbits here and there. And since uh, Tell Your Tale was really short, about five minutes per episode, we kind of got a lot yet so um, a lot yet so little. And from what? Make Your Mark. Like, was it a direct continuation to the series? Oh, sorry, the movie? Or was it just... Somewhere in uh, somewhere later on, because from my personal feeling, um, make sorry, uh, new generation was to be the first thing that we see beforehand, and then after that, it's tell your tale where we get all that filler episode, and make your mark is kind of the follow up, just to get thing, just to get the huge ball rolling, because after this, uh, we're introduced to bad guys for the main six to kind of deal with which is five cool. I said six was it yes all right my bad five yeah the, the main five to deal with it later on so yeah um I, I don't know man like the show overall was a fun watch but the overarching story the overarching plot it feels like they weren't talking to each other to get things done or get things stable like i i would really love things to be stable that, that that's all i asked for like a continuation here a continuation there things make sense and then like uh, if if they don't even want to talk about technology at all it's all cool but 
they, they need to remember that those earth ponies did awesome tools awesome gadgets like that unicorn trapping tool that worked twice one from the movie and one from Taylor Tales so they, they shouldn't really uh, close a blind eye to that tell me I'm um, wrong and they refer back to the technology in later episodes uh, sorry but Honestly, then I don't think I can <laughs> Mm, I don't, after Izzy in a box, I don't think we saw the unicorn traps again. Yeah, I mean, they they, they did kind of uh, this um uh, this not dismantle, but they did kind of disarm it and put it into storage because unicorns are citizens now. So what what I'm really saying is, can we get a pony with uh, mechanical arms to manipulate? things, objects, or um, jetpack to fly and whatnot. Oh, you want a tech marine pony then? Yeah! See, it makes sense, right? Because Earth Pony Tech is awesome, and they got that factory, remember? I mean, Silver well, did make a, one. It, it becomes a, uh, a, a video uh, production studio later. Oh no, they're in the background and nobody ever hears from them again. Oh no. Uh, well, it's the last hurrah for Sprout. Wait, Sprout never comes back? He comes he back, comes right? back. He comes back. He only has like a few seconds oh. cameos, that's all. Wait, a few seconds? I thought he, he was in Teleotail and also Mega Mark, right? No, I don't uh, think he was make... in Teleotail. Uh, yeah, I, I think Make Your Mark is the only time we... The most we get out of Tell Your Tale is a wanted poster. Oh. And I think that was actually trying to tell him he's still wanted around. <laughs> I see. But oh. then comes the problem with the game tie, Norman. You know, oh. the one that you played I, I, through. I, I remember that played through. Uh, I need to buy the second game. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, he, he 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 was out of jail, right? If I remember right, in the in the games. Yeah. So and he was trying what... to get everybody to be back to racist again. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that could be related to make your mark then, because uh, Silver mentioned he's there. Well, as I said, it's only a few uh, second cameos, and he's just a whiny little brat. That's all he contributes to this. Ah, uh, I see. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. Um, villain is boring, so can't say much. Anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at mbshow. And my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo Silver. Where can the good people find you? You can find me on YouTube, DeviantArt, and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill with links to my Patreon and Kofi. And if you happen to be in Milwaukee on November 1st through the 3rd, I'll be at Ciderfest. Uh, hoping to see folks there and have a fun celebratory time. Yay! If I'm not mistaken, there's also some fun games that you like to play with some other guests, right? Like whose line is it anyway that, that seems to be a popular one right that you always do oh yes uh, <laughs> actually it was at when he, uh, at Cider Fest where I had to imitate Sparky like six or seven times oh that's was, rough wait, wait, it why? was murder on the knee because that's what the skit called for and I ended up being Sparky and I would get on my knees and by about the fifth time I was like oh god <laughs> my knees are becoming powder uh, we're not as young as we, we used to be. I'm not really. This old man, he, he, got no, he don't have nothing left in him. Oh, God, please don't make me play the baby dragon again. I pray for the sweet release of death. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, so show, um, convention hosts, you know what to do. Load those um, hats, uh, load, load those rolls. Uh, in that hat for Sparky, for Silver. Yay. Lo load them. 
<laughs> oh lordy. <laughs> Jacob, where can a good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkar, on the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomb Riser, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sunzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, you see, the 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 whole team for this uh, make your mark is tyrannical dictatorship. Dictatorship. See, Twilight has always been planning that from the very beginning, and she made it work here. Agreed. I mean, if a doomsday gonna... device is your idea of uh, fixing the problem, okay. I remain skeptical. I mean, it comes to work, right? I mean, it's not a bad plan. <laughs> but is it her plan? Dun, dun, dun. Or is there a plan? <laughs> <laughs>